informed is admissible under Frye. This brings me back to my original, my original question. What you've done and done well is you've, you've told us about the evidence that's favored your side of the case. But the question here is, was the Fry test correct or incorrect? The Fry test and Judge Brandt's opinion was incorrect. There is more, it is not generally accepted. Uh, there might be some small uh, individualized doctors that in, use in it. This but case, in this case, the judge that heard the Fry hearing, I thought ruled that it was acceptable, the evidence was acceptable under Fry. It was acceptable for the limited purpose of the possibility of impairment. Um, his basis for doing and so. You, is that the specific language that was used? Ultimately, yes. His conclusions, uh, he gives a brief answer, yes, it's acceptable, but if you go to the last page of his opinion, he has great concerns about the value of the test, and therefore, on the final page of his ruling, um, issues, if you will, the limitations for which he would indicate it can be used, um, which is that a failed test may be limited to the conclusion that a failed test suggests the subject may have consumed alcohol and may be under the influence. There should be no attempt to correlate the test results with any particular blood alcohol level or range or level of intoxication. He also expresses... Back, Mr. Rimsel, back to the weight versus the admissibility. Isn't his overall conclusion really looking at all of them? He said it satisfies Fry, and then bottom line, in conjunction with other evidence, HGN may be used as part of the police officer's opinion that the subject is under the influence and impaired. That, that is his conclusion, or that is one of the statements in his multi-paged ruling. However, and, and this that, is, that's why I want to understand why, and, and again, in, in light of Chief Justice Fitzgerald's question, why what we're really not talk, what, what you're really talking about here is that if the evidence is admitted, why it should be of limited weight because of everything that you've indicated here. That the, the jury is, is, is still um, uh, allowed to consider it. You can go after it on cross-examination and then argue, you know, what weight really is there to this HGN test. Well, Isn't that where we really are after this, after this judge's ruling? No. no. Okay. And the reason why is because this is a scientific test. And as your honors indicated correctly in your original opinion, it's going to be given the aura of significant weight and the potential, because it's a scientific test, to mislead. It is, it is basically speculation, guess, and conjecture. When a that's test fine, but if that's your position, what you're really asking this court to do is look at the expert testimony and what have you that happened at that hearing and determine that HGN does not qualify under Fry. Well, that's correct, because the ultimate conclusion on Fry is reviewed de novo, and the trial court's conclusions are accorded no weight. Uh, the findings of fact are accorded weight, but frankly, this is not a finding of fact case. This is frankly Counsel, just research. To follow up on uh, Justice Thomas's question, though, you're also arguing that in this particular cl uh, case, CLAT performed the test incorrectly and therefore should not be admissible for that reason. Absolutely. Um, so it's, it's not just the matter of of the, the HGN test to be admissible at all costs and move on to see whether it was um, should be weighed more heavily or not. Well, I agree, because this is not simply a classroom discussion on the, the merits of the test, but ultimately boils down to whether Officer Klatt's performance qualifies Counselor, to be admissible. Counselor, at what point did you raise that issue? At what point was that raised? Right. Um, the foundation for his at the admissibility of the test beyond Fry was raised before the appellate court. And it's in their and, opinion and, and as the such. the first time through then, right? Pardon? And the first time through. Yes, it was. And if the trial court had, in fact, performed the Fry hearing during the trial, as this court has basically ruled it should have, the evidence that we now have before us would have been before the trial court to exclude then Officer Klatt's test. If that trial court had done its job correctly, it would have heard what we now hear, that's the presumption, 
and it would have known, and the evidence of a lack of foundation would have been before them. But the, it's the state's obligation to prove it was done correctly. And frankly, the mere words that Officer Klatt said are an example of how problematic this HGN test is. He indicated he's done this test hundreds of times, yet every expert before the, in the Fry hearing said he did it wrong and that there was no way you could render that test that Officer Klatt did was valid. That tells us hundreds of times he himself has apparently performed this test, misused it, perhaps misled various proponents of the test. That's how um, dangerous it is to put a tool, a scientific tool of this nature, into the hands of police officers who are receiving training of three, six hours, who are not hardly tested on their knowledge of it, their proficiency in actually moving the stylus and all of that are not tested at all in any pass or fail way, and they're never even recertified. I ask the court to look at the systemic issue before your honor. It's not necessarily whether an optometrist can do it, because clearly they can and what they use it for. It's whether a police officer should be put in their hands. The court should not begin to judicially engraft, if you will. We'll let the police do it, but they need more training. They need more tests. You would almost have to create an entire system to get them up to par. I'm fearful that Counsel, what would happen... I want to... That what the state of Delaware has done? Delaware has. Uh, they've essentially, I don't know if they judici judicially engrafted it or whether it was merely a fact that their officers go through substantially greater training. Texas, substantially greater training. Recertifications, reinvestments. Maryland, I believe, requires not only an officer but an additional expert to have to appear, such as an optometrist, to at least explain that there are other causes. Police officers are told, get on the stand, tell them four Four clues is a failure, it means somebody's impaired, even though we, we know in reality that's a .04, and they hide their heads in the sand when you try to ask them about the 47 to 241 other possible causes of nystagmus, they just say, I was only trained about alcohol, that's all I know, and I'm trained that that means they were impaired. Counselor, your time is up, but I do want to ask you a question. The answer is yes or no, or I don't know, okay? Is there any jurisdiction that limits the HGN test to probable cause? Yes. The Blake case from Arizona said that Fry does not apply to probable cause. So I believe that they limit it to that. But I know the Blake case specifically said that. It's quoted in your original McCown 1 opinion. It's a little bit beyond yes, but thanks. We'll let it go. Thank you.